You got to clap too. I don't we have to clap too. Time. You do because there's two cameras, so you have to clap. It syncs audio yeah. and video. Audio. Okay. <laughs> Start this over. Start this over. Let me let me leave. <laughs> What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Son of a Boy Dad podcast. Today is August 23rd. Wow. Correct. August just flew by, huh? Seriously. And the weather is changing, too. It's been raining for the last three days. Uh, welcome back to Son of a Boy Dad. I'm Lil Sass, and I'm with Roan. I'm here, uh, Lil Sass's producer, Roan. Good to see you Roan, all. my producer. Um, Super producer, if I may. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're just going to chop it up. Uh, I mean, we kind of just got in a really big fight. <laughs> He's got a really big argument. Well, it's about responsibility. It comes down to responsibilities at the end of the day. Roan's lacking on his part for responsibilities. I just don't want to be responsible. I just don't want to be responsible. Roan's going on a Roan's going on a third honeymoon. I have never been to Bali before. (laughs) Roan's going on a honeymoon to Afghanistan next week. (laughs) It's beautiful this time of year. Yeah. And the rates, I don't know why, but the rates are so fucking good right the now. The rates are very low. It's $10. They actually pay you $100 just to get out there. <laughs> the Airbnbs are fucking so cheap in Afghanistan right now. <laughs> you can just fucking post up in, in the exact Airbnb that Osama used to stay in. Yeah. You can just cozy up behind this huge wall. So what, what is the, the whole thing with Afghanistan is that people are mad about, obviously, the Taliban, but I think it's like... Are they it's saying, states' rights, really? Are they saying it's basically just like so the U.S. did nothing, like the, like basically like so what the U.S. did was just a waste of time? Yeah, that we just went to war out there for and, no reason, and then as soon as we left, the Taliban took over. Yeah, it just went back to how how it used to be because we went out there to stop the Taliban, right? We went out there because um, the World Trade Towers got knocked down by. And when was that? Uh, <laughs> I think it was like twenty twenty twelve. It was, yeah. It was like the Mayan, that was the Mayan thing. It was 2011. That was the whole Just Mayan kidding. calendar it was 9/11. thing. 9-11. Never forget that. <laughs> Never forget that. I heard someone the other day saying, like, they were, like, saying, like, a date of, uh, like, the, we have a show coming up on September 11th, and then they, like, It was were, Brandon Mordell. It was not. It wasn't? No, it was no, someone else. He has a show on 9-11. He was like, this was the only date I could get. <laughs> <laughs> These people had forgotten that 9-11. They're like, wait, what day was the show again? It's like, how can you forget that it was on September 11th? Like, it's uh, yeah. the one the one memorable thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. I mean, sa- September 11th this year is on a Saturday, I think. So it kind of is like... It was gonna kind be of shit. a party. There's going to be shit happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a fucking sick party day. Do you think that they planned it for the 20th anniversary to be on a Saturday? Probably. Because that fucking... <laughs> Did you hear that McDonald's is coming out with the Osama meal? <laughs> what is it? The Osama, it's just two large Cokes. <laughs> <laughs> no food. Just the tallest, skinniest Cokes. <laughs> I, can't, I mean, so Weedy has a meal. I just saw that shit. Yeah, it's so funny watching these celebrities get meals and they just like take one bite of it. And you can tell it's like their first time ever eating McDonald's. You don't think so? Weedy like, I ha- haven't had a carb in six years. <laughs> <laughs> They're just nibbling on the lettuce. <laughs> I feel like Soweetie doesn't have a balanced diet at all. I feel like Soweetie doesn't give a fuck what she's eating. Is that how you say it? Soweetie? <laughs> Soweetie. Yeah, exactly. Soweetie. So there we- was, is there, there's a BTS meal too, right? Yeah, I, th- I think so. And the Travis Scott meal, of course. Of course, the best and then uh, Dixie and Charlie have have their meals over at Duncan. Does Dixie? I don't think Dixie has. One. Oh, only Charlie's got Charlie one. Charlie has the Charlie, the Charlie at Duncan, yeah. which is just a a, a trienta, a thirty ounce black coffee that will make you shit your brains no, out. I think it's actually the opposite. I think it's like a I think it's like a small coffee and it's just like straight sugar, <laughs> a large milk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funniest part about all these meals is like it's just like a normal meal. They just like throw a name on it. The BTS right. meal was like 10 chicken nuggets. <laughs> like, can you swap out? Like, uh, like I know the Saweetie is uh, like, has Sprite and like four nuggets or something like yeah. that. But can you swap out a Coke and it's not the Saweetie anymore? No, it wouldn't be the Saweetie. Yeah, so you can't. It wouldn't be it. the Saweetie. <laughs> Saweetie. The, uh, the Travis Scott meal was just like, they were like, they were like, this is how Travis Scott likes his burger. And it was like just like a burger with bacon on it. And I was like, that's how almost everyone likes their burgers. Except yeah. me. I actually don't like bacon on my cheeseburgers. Shut up. Not even Applewood? No, I think it's too much. Not even a smoked bacon? I think the bacon takes away from the burger. Bacon had a big craze in the right around the turn of 9-11. Yeah. It was right after 9-11 that bacon People got turned super to hot. 
Yeah, people, exactly. People couldn't cope. They couldn't trust their government anymore. They had to turn to obesity. And there was this big anti-Islamic undercurrent. So people wanted to eat a bunch of pig and uh, try try to get into things that are normally taboo in other cultures. It was brave of them, for sure. (laughs) But people got fat, though. People got fat. People gained a lot of weight. No one talks about the the weight gain after the post-9-11 weight gain enough. It's like a uh, postpartum depression. Yeah. It's like post-mortem depression. Everybody died and people were bumped out just fucking snacking on the freedom fries and all that kind of shit shout out big cat shout out big cat just kidding don't shout out big cat oh shit <laughs> wow he already, has he already has enough fame as it is we need to start taking he some shout fame out from people we should chip away at some people's fame i've been trying to think of how to sabotage people in here one by one i had one sip of coffee before this and i'm just getting the jitters really coffee is just the worst i don't drink coffee ever but i haven't had caffeine in like three days because i was just i didn't leave my apartment for Saturday or Sunday because it was pouring and I was just like, eh. I thought you were supposed to go back to the homeland. I was, but I couldn't because of the hurricane. I thought you were going South Shore. I wouldn't have been able to get back. And my my parents were like, you're not going to be able to get back if you go home because the trains are going to get canceled. And then I was like, I don't think they're going to get canceled. Like, why would they cancel the train because of rain? And then they got canceled. They got. How does the train get canceled? It's, it's land bound. I don't know. But that would have sucked. We would have been fucked. We would have had to record here at like 2 a.m. Tonight? Yeah. We're going to have to eventually start recording at some dicey times. Yeah. Our dedication to this podcast is going to get tested over the next oh, yeah. couple we're months. Never missing, for sure. We're never missing an episode. Oh, we're, and we're, we're probably going to give people extra episodes. We're probably going to sprinkle on extra episodes here and there. But they're going to they're gonna put our fucking yeah. feet to the people fire. Liked, people liked the bonus episode last week. Why do you think they liked it? A lot of people were like, this is awesome. We should you guys keep doing two episodes a week. Yeah, but that fucking bag, bro. We're dream chasers. We're yeah. like Meek Mill. We, I would like to do two episodes a week, but also at the same time, I don't want to promise two episodes a week and then not be able to do two episodes a week. You know what I mean? And I feel like giving a random two episodes a week is like, we're subverting the advertisers yeah. by sprinkling on an extra episode. Yeah. Do we have advertisers today? Oh, big time. We're about to have some new advertisers. Oh, People yeah, want a do. fucking slice of the pie, dude. Yeah. <laughs> also, it's nice with the advertisers too because we both get we both pocket like 30k off of each ad. Yeah. That we say. Yeah. Not even each ad deal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Each ad that we even utter. What do you We get a it? lot of ads that we just like blow over. We're like, oh, we don't want to work with them. Yeah, sorry. We're not fucking around with the Burger King. <laughs> yeah, come on. That's how fucking- You saw what they tweeted about the women in the kitchen? <laughs> not, funny. not for us. Not funny. Not funny and not for us. Not cool at all. The women are should be liberated in, in, in many different ways. Yes. Women should be able to fucking spread their wings. Should never be in the kitchen. Should be a man's job to be in the kitchen. It should. That's how I fucking feel about it. Mm-hmm. You see that uh, and- old Andrew Schultz bit, though, where he's like, all the countries where women oppress- are oppressed and they have to spend a lot of time in the kitchen have the best food. Every one of those countries. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> yes, they're forcing women into the kitchen, but it is fruitful in that <laughs> these women have... Uh, but that wasn't... The-, the Burger King tweet was saying like women aren't allowed in the kitchen. Like They were like, women belong in the kitchen. As in, as in like they should be allowed to go in the kitchen if they want to go in the kitchen. Burger King was saying that. Burger King's got its head so far up its ass, it doesn't Burger know King, which way Burger is King up. is like, the fact that Burger King is even a thing still. You have to find out. I haven't out. gone to Burger King in years. How are they even in the conversation? They have good burgers. They have good burgers. I like the char. I enjoy the char They've and got, I like, like their fries. Yeah. But the fact that they're in oh, the conversation, I, I only hear people exclusively talking negatively about yeah. Burger King. Honestly, I've stopped seeing them around too. I have. I have. There's no Burger Actually, there's a Burger King pretty close to our office. But aside from that, there's like three Burger Kings in New York. The only Burger Kings I see are right by Wayfair's and it makes me think that they're Trafficking children. Oh, yeah. Speaking of trafficking children. Yeah. I think that. <laughs> Let's get into these ads. <laughs> I think that a large majority of stores in New York are selling children or selling drugs. Really? Have we talked about this before? My theory on this? No, I don't think we have. What's- There's a spy store next to our office. Yes, I know the, that on one. On the second floor. I think that that's for. Uh- Fat guys who are getting cheated on for legitimate people who are trying to spy. I or thought it was like a, like a costume store. What? What? In what world does a spy store survive the pandemic? But like decent restaurants don't. I mean, people people just need more spy equipment now than no, ever. It's the answer is they're selling kids. <laughs> you think that that little there's like dink? six costume stores on this block. But there's the. Uh, that's such a small storefront. You think that selling kids would be more lucrative? Like they wouldn't have to have like a fucking ten foot by two foot storefront if they were actually selling kids. Like there's fucking money in selling kids. 
Yeah, but they need a front for something. So you think it's a tiny front? I think it's like a no, massive I, I corporation. Think, I think the, the spy front. store. I think that whoever owned the spy store also owns all the costume stores on this block. There's definitely. I went into the costume store. There's like six employees, not one person in there. All these big, big Italian dudes, like mafia guys. And they're like, and I was like, do you guys have fake blood? And they were like, yeah, just give me a second. And he like runs into the back and gets it. And he was like, he bleeds one of the kids. (laughs) He runs at the back and he gets it. And I'm like, how much? And he's like, just take it. I was like, dude, we're in the middle of a pandemic. It's There's fr- no way you can tell me that you can afford to just be giving away shit. Maybe they're wholesaling uh, the costumes or something. <laughs> but if, especially if it's big Italian dudes, Italian dudes don't traffic humans. Since when? You're thinking of Albanians. No, I'm thinking of Italians. No, you're thinking of Hungarian dudes. No. You're not about to put this on Italians right now, especially after the Cuomo shit. Especially <laughs> they're already having, they're already do, they're already dealing with enough. Yeah, exactly. You can't be putting this bullshit on Italians that there's human trafficking going on. Italians are the ones to stop a human traffic. Yeah, they'll be the ones to fucking intercede with their weird ass police sirens. <laughs> they definitely have some weird ass sirens in Italy. They love stepping in. Yeah. Oh, Italians, believe it or not, Italians as perverted as they are. <laughs> They actually are extremely... Pick your next words carefully, brother. They're actually extremely anti-human trafficking. <laughs> it's actually a very, very well-known fact, which is why Cuomo thrived in the office. Exactly. When Cuomo he was, was cracking in the down. office, when Cuomo was in the office, human trafficking cases dropped 90%, and that is a fact. That's personally shocking to me. I uh, know. That throws me for... A lot for of people a, don't. A lot of people are surprised by for that. For a fucking loop. No, there's a... I was watching a fucking... You back on TikTok? No. Did you watch The Accountant? Yes, I did watch the account. You like it? Yes, I like Good it. Good ass movie. Loves they, the end. They made autism seem incredible. I was like, I wish I had autism. When that when that ended, I was like, damn, I wish I had autism. Because I no, I've never watched like a action movie where someone's killing a bunch of people and I've been like, I wish I could do this. But then I watched that and I was like, dude, like imagine being able to just like see anyone being like, Oh, I could take that person down easily. Yeah, it's incredible. It's uh also did you let's list the things that he got to do better because he was autistic. Murder. He was incredible with a gun. His hand-to-hand combat was incredible. Numbers. He, he, he crunched numbers so fast, he could digest numbers like nobody's yeah. business. He was like brooding and like mysterious to women. Yeah. It's the it's the dopest thing yeah, that's ever happened awesome. to anybody. What did he... Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Um, did you think that... Did you predict the end? I knew they were going to be... I knew they were brothers. They had to be brothers. Yeah, it made sense. Did you predict the end end, though? What? The, what happened with the... The painting? The sister? No. You did you even put that together? No. What happened? Oh, Brody. <laughs> uh, no spoilers, but this is a, a little this bit movie of a spoiler. Came out years ago. This came out in 1996. 16, I think. 2016, this came out. But the girl who at the beginning was bugging out because he couldn't find the puzzle piece, that was his sister. And she was in the uh, facility the whole time typing like instructions. With like the the cool British woman yeah, voice, yeah, yeah, that was his sister the entire time. Oh, really? Yes, bro. So he was working with the sister, and the brother was the bad guy. How fucking crazy is that shit? Oh, I did not put that together at all. <laughs> you might need to do a rewatch. Bro. Yeah, I might have to. I'm really bad with movies. I I, I paused them every like twenty seconds, and I miss a lot of shit. It's, it feels but like that movie. I didn't. That movie. I was pretty. I was pretty sucked in, and I finished the whole thing. Also, have you ever seen The Town with Ben Affleck? Yes, great movie. Don't you like the ending of that movie and the ending of and the ending of the account were very similar? How they make it be like he gives something to the girl and then the girl and then he's like, Oh, I'll see you again someday. Yeah, that's an easy way out of movies. Like that was the, like painting, the end of like and then Triple he, X, right? Too or something like that. I don't know. I was just Bora, thinking Bora. Just, I was just thinking I was just thinking because they're both Ben Affleck and it was like in that one he gives but he gives the girl the painting. And then like some note or some shit. And then the other one, he gives the girl the oranges and all the money. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it's just. Uh, I'm a big Ben Affleck guy. I'm a you love I'm Affleck. I'm a suffer for an Affleck movie. Whether he's the cool guy or he's the he autistic accountant. Either way. He was awesome. He, plays. he was a great. He was great in that. Doesn't movie. it seem like the world is kind of hurtling towards like labeling people two ways. Either you're super focused and the world will say you have autism or you can't focus at all and the world will say that you have ADD and there's just like two camps that everybody is looped into. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they said one in six people have autism and it kind of made me want to get like a test because you're hoping for it. I don't think I have autism though. I don't think I'm smart enough. 
Is that I like s- a stereotype? Because I'm, I'm not supposed to say that. That nah, you're not that's smart like enough? That's thing. a positive stereotype. Yeah. I don't think I'm smart enough, but I do think I'm socially awkward enough. Okay, okay. So there's hope for you then. Yeah. I also do have ADD. But there it is. There it is. It's out. <laughs> oh, do what man. You want. Do what you want with that. That's brave of you, brother. Yeah, no. Thank you for... Uh, and it's been ruining my life for the last 18 years. Oh, man. That, but I mean, kudos to you because the first step is kind of coming to grips with it and just being like, hey, this is me. ADD is the most fake mental or learning disability that there is. It's, Everyone has ADD. It's just so easy. It's just to, a way for doctors to prescribe you Adderall when you're like six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so easy to diagnose or just so many things could be it. Yeah. I was like, I didn't care about school. And they were like, oh, you have ADD. He doesn't like math. <laughs> yeah. ADD. Something is wrong with this child. He's got ADD. <laughs> he doesn't He doesn't care about this history textbook that was written 200 years ago. <laughs> the pages smell like sleep. And he can't pay attention somehow. They literally had me on Adderall when I was in fifth grade. And it like affected my mood a lot. Like I had no personality. And my mom told my doctor and she was and he was like, well, we're probably gonna have to put him on some antidepressants. <laughs> Jesus. And I was like, why don't we just take me off of the off of the fucking Adderall? I well, was on like Adderall, Vivance, Concerta. I took all of them. Yeah. Stratera. I, I, I was, was just on. like, but I wouldn't focus on school. I would just like be like, oh, look at that cloud outside and then stare at it for like an hour straight. <laughs> it's ADD, bro. Yeah. Or actually, you were, you were probably a weed head. You, you probably were just a low key weed head in at, fifth grade. Yeah, probably. Nah. You just hadn't, you hadn't, you didn't get the weed to be able to deal with it. Yeah. The probably. fact that you're just like uh, cloud gazing. Well, you're just nowadays, staring at that, the clouds. nowadays they're prescribing weed instead of Adderall. Are they? No. You know, Adderall is the most prescribed drug in the world, though. It's like 30 million people are prescribed Adderall or something like that. It's so easy to get. Might be that a year, honestly. And I know tons of people who have like five different flavors of Adderall prescribed (laughs) to them. It's like we have the time time lapse. We have the five milligrams. We have the 30 milligram extended release. You can get an 80 milligram that'll fucking knock you off your socks and have you like biting through your fucking (laughs) upper jaw. (laughs) Just grinding your teeth. I was on like 200. I was on 80 milligrams a day of Stratero. What was uh, what I was actually on, and that zombies you the fuck out. It makes you into like a, you're not a human. Yeah, I was on full full Mike zombie mode. It was um, but it but the great my grades were fucking so my good. grades were not my blocked. grades skyrocketed. Yeah. But that's bullshit though because everybody's on it. It's like I would, I, I, if I was introduced to Adderall now, like and not that because like I see people like take Adderall all the time. Like obviously like, everyone takes Adderall, but like I. I'm now I'm always like, oh, I don't know how they're taking that. Like it used to make me feel so shitty. But like if I was introduced to it now and it's like, oh, I'm gonna go do this podcast or I'm gonna go do this, take this test, and you're just like, oh, you just pop an Adderall before, I would definitely take it now. I I used to do it for battle raps. I would yeah. just like it's like a performance enhancing drug. Yeah. Like it makes you just a little bit sharper. I used to when I was younger, I was I was I had a trampoline and I was always trying to look I was trying to land a front flip. Fuck. Could you do a backflip or just no? No, no I, flips. Couldn't, I couldn't commit to the backflip. You don't have the ass for it. No. To be honest. Yeah. You and I would, <laughs> I would consistently try and do a front flip and I never could. And then I took Adderall one day and I was just banging out front flips. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. And my mom was like, it's the Adderall. My mom said it like it was like a positive thing. I was like, that shouldn't be a good thing that <laughs> I can now, that I'm now able to do it. They would like have, my mom would like have me take it like before I would like go to my hockey games. Shut up. Yeah. That's and then eventually, so- I think eventually I was in like eighth or ninth grade and I was like, I'm done taking this. Shit. You were scoring eight goals a game. You're like, this I was is like, boring for me. I was like 40 pounds underweight in like ninth grade. I score whenever I want and I do a backflip on ice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, Adderall sucks. I would, I, I could never even imagine taking that shit anymore. I think a lot of people really like Adderall. They do. I, I know people's like parents that are like, do you have any Adderall? Like, do, like you have any? I'll be like, I, I have Coke. They're like, no, I don't like Coke. <laughs> I want to do Ad. I need Adderall. Like, I want that. I want the good stuff. And people really think it is the good stuff. Because it's just meth. Yeah, but it's more than meth, though. Yeah. What I wish you, I could do take- you like snort Adderall or do you just take it? What is the what? I, I mean, I have done both. I don't, what know, is I the point the of snorting Adderall? Do you get high from it, or does it just kick in quicker? Kicks in quicker. It takes like ten minutes to kick in. All right. Sometimes people don't have ten minutes. All people right. Love just filling their nose. Time is money, bro. And it is fun to snort stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you don't I think so? Imagine. I've never snorted anything except for what's it called? The tobacco. What is that? Snuff. 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 <laughs> Snuff. I've done that, that. Sounds even. That feels even weirder to snort. 
That was pretty cool. It felt like I just snorted a menthol cigarette. That doesn't sound cool. It, it was. <laughs> what scenario were you in? Fucking, I was at a snuff party. Were you at a saloon in the 1800s? No. <laughs> were I you... was actually at, uh, I was with Wonton Don. He would have some snus. Yeah. Were you doing some snus? Uh, just just like recreationally? Like, were you trying to... Like, KB and Nick went through a weird phase where they were just like, <laughs> they were just doing it all the time. That was definitely their sneaky way of just doing doing actual drugs. No, it wasn't. Anytime... How do Maybe you know? Maybe KB is not Nick's. Why? He's too scared? I, I think so. You're saying that boy's yeller of cocaine? I don't do drugs, bro. Mm, Let's make that okay. clear. Can we rewind to earlier in the episode when you were like, I was on Adderall, <laughs> Stratera. That's prescription. The only drug that okay. I can see myself getting addicted to realistically is Ativan. Because that shit is just like the God. That's God's drug. Why? What does it make you feel like? Like I'm, 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 a, like I'm a piece of butter on top of Flapjack. <laughs> That That's should be the fucking pineapples. commercial. That's from Pineapple Express. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, um, no, but that's what it feels like. Like, I take that, I take it before my plane. I, I took, like... My plane. I, I take it before I fly, and... Uh, Do you have my plane ready? <laughs> I take it before I fly, and I'm just walking around the airport with, like, a smile on my face. And you don't even, like, remember taking off. It's so nice, because I hate flying. I think it's, like, I think the reason that I enjoy it so much is because I hate flying so much, and it, like, makes me not have to think about that. It takes away the scariness. Yeah, really, there's, like, it doesn't really do anything. It just makes you feel, like, calm. You're not that scared. Of flying? You're not that scared, period. I used to think that you're the scared guy, but then you go in the studio with Benny Butcher. You're not scared of that. You're, this, some other thing happened where you weren't scared, where I expected you to be scared. Um, you these go on hikes all the time. These are scenarios where I, well, I actually am scared most of the time that I'm hiking, which is funny. It just keeps you on edge. I really don't like the feeling of not being able to breathe. And when we're, that's when weird. We, when we, most people enjoy that. <laughs> no, I don't like the feeling of like when you get up high and you can't get like a full breath of air. Yeah. I, I mean, you need to breathe. You need yeah. to be able to breathe. And I heard no that- one, none of my friends notice it. And I'm like sitting there and we're taking like 10 steps. My heart's like exploding out of my chest. But it's your favorite hobby and favorite type of exercise. It is. Oh, easily. Because that's only that only lasts for like 30, 40 minutes. You need to be able to, you need to expand your lungs. Yeah. I've heard that life expectancy is, uh, lung capacity is directly correlated to life expectancy. So if you got big ass lungs, you're going to live longer. More important than diet, I heard. Just having huge lungs. <laughs> More important than diet, exercise. Body needs to be lung. <laughs> if you're just all, if you're just one big lung, then you're gonna live a long ass time. Do you need both lungs? Uh, don't some people have like a metal lung, an iron lung, an iron lung? Yeah, for sure. Uh, but I think that you do need both. I would take a third though. I would love a third. I'd just stack up on lungs. Why not have more lungs inside your body? I would like a third nostril too. Maybe just like a drain at the top. Oh, like like a trumpet, like a yeah. a release valve that you could <laughs> yeah. just get snot out of. Yeah. You could just press on a little I, trumpet sometimes valve. Sometimes when I'm bored, I just look up shit that's like happening inside your body. Like I look up like what does a stuffy nose look like inside your body? <laughs> And it doesn't look like anything. It's not cool. <laughs> I bet not. You'd expect it to be like a backup of fluid, like going from like here, like all the way up here. But really, it's just like a swollen, like aller- it's just like allergies. It's not like anything interesting. You know what's uh, some I, some stats that I feel like are bullshit inside the body is like whenever they tell you that you could like lay out your intestines and it would be like 85 uh, yeah, miles. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck are we talking about? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, the, I think they say that the large intestine or maybe it's the small intestine because small. the small intestine is bigger than the large. Yes, yeah. that's the one that unspools like. Like, it's uh, like 30 feet long, I think. Yeah, it's like, or I think it's even longer than that. It, it might be like preposterously long. No wonder you're getting constipated all the time. Like, no no wonder you get, people get constipated. It's probably all just like... Yeah, it's just a, a, a just knot compressed. of shit. It's like, yeah, having to go through a whole balled up and ball of yarn. I looked up that dude, two days ago. I looked up, what does it look like when you're constipated inside your body? <laughs> Nothing. It's not cool at all. Really? You expect it to just be like, a, like your whole intestines are just like shit filled, but it's not. They should have some type of cross section of human beings where you can see inside them. Yeah. There was this dude who, uh, <laughs> he got shot and, uh, he got like shot through, I think his chest or something yeah. and the doctors could see his heart and they were like, we're going to just like not close this hole up and we're just going to study your heart. And they studied this dude's heart for like 12 years of his life. Like they just like looked inside of his body, but it probably sucked. It was prob- he just constantly bleeding? Uh, I'm not sure how that worked, but I think it was like an open wound where they could see inside of him and he was just so tired of that. That sounds like that would get 
so infected so fast and just bo- like just so tired. He probably got a shit ton of money. Yeah, they must have been paying. But they said that he like they escaped for five years and like they finally like caught up to him like oh s- several God. states so over. He wasn't getting paid. They're like, get back in there. <laughs> yeah. We need to keep prodding you. Maybe it was like an agreement because like uh, all bullet wounds are reported to the police. It could be some shit like that. Maybe they were like, we won't report it to the police if you do, if you agree to do this for, for 12, 12 years. years. I w- yeah, it's definitely better. I was going to say I'd rather just go to prison for 12 years, but you definitely wouldn't. But you don't even go to prison for getting shot. Like, they had to have been able to patch that shit up. Depends on... I mean, what scenario are you getting shot? Like, there's no, there's a, there's very, very small scenarios where you're getting shot where, like, something is illegal is it not happening. Yeah. But probably not on your part. Maybe he didn't want to snitch. Maybe he's seen enough 40 days in or... Uh, 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 30 days? For, first 48. First 48? First 48 is what I'm thinking of. What is that? You never seen First Forty Eight? No, I thought it was Thirty Days. The prison. First Forty Eight is like there's a murder. It's on A and E or something like that. There's a murder, and you have forty eight hours to catch whoever did it, or else the chances of finding out who did it go down extensively. Oh yeah, because like fifty percent of homicides in the United States aren't solved. Is that true? Yeah, that makes me want to get away with murder. That's true, right? Fifty percent. Of homicides in the United States aren't solved. I'll buy I'll it. it up. That makes me because people keep on getting people keep on people are mad at me because they think I just make shit up. I don't yeah, make shit up. You don't unless I'm joking. Like the Osama bin Laden meal at McDonald's isn't actually happening. You thought that was you, at uh, you dumb Buffalo Wild Wings, <laughs> two towers of Miller Light. <laughs> yeah, forty percent, forty percent. So that's pretty good. You were pretty close on pretty that. Close. And that's also like damn near a coin flip that if you kill someone, you're getting away with it. Yeah. Damn near a coin okay, when flip. When I was in Wyoming, we, so we drove, we drove to the mountain. The mountain was two hours away. The second half of the drive. So an hour outside of the mountain, we did not have service. Like complete dead. Like highways, completely no service. And then the whole entire hike, we didn't have service. Like, like not one bar. Like it was just dead. And I was like, dude, like out, like if you got in a car crash out here, the police wouldn't even be able to, like, you wouldn't be able to call the police. Yeah. How is the, what's the road like? Like if it's you go like off windy, the road, it's you're just a windy, windy road. Yeah. The whole thing was just windy, like highway. So if you picked a random spot and like went, uh, you know, 200 yards off the road, you yeah. could just leave a dead body and nobody would ever no find would it. ever find it. That's so sweet. Yeah. The only, like we went to, uh, we, we stopped at like a rest stop and they, we were the only people there. There wasn't even anyone inside. We just went and used the bathroom. It did you ever, closed. did you ever make pacts with your boys when you were young that if you murdered someone, they would help you get like rid of the body? No. Really? I don't, I don't have it in me to kill. You made those pacts, Owen? Mm-hmm. It's like, if I ever kill someone, I can call you up and no questions asked. You'll help me get rid of the body? No. No. You don't have real friends. Yeah. Maybe not. Damn, that's some <laughs> pussy shit, bro. Yeah. So what would you do if you wound up killing somebody? It's almost like your hands are tied. If I ever killed someone, I would definitely turn myself in. I wouldn't be able to live with that. Really? Yeah. You're a guilt-ridden individual? Yeah. That's tough. I would not be able to live with that. Damn, you'd just be thinking about it every day, seeing the face of the person that you strangled to death? Yeah, probably. That sucks, bro. Me? Nah. nah. Well, you've probably killed people before. <laughs> I'm not telling bro, anyone. Bro, you're, you're from Philly. Yeah, bro. We fucking at least kill like a robot. <laughs> well, at least beat the shit out of whatever robot you send our way. I could kill a robot. You think? No, you get too guilty about it. No. I, I you killed think a, that I robot a has a family? I killed a bird one time on accident and I cried. <laughs> I killed it with a baseball. <laughs> you Randy Johnson? No, I hit a baseball. Or it was a wiffle ball, actually. I hit a wiffle ball and the bird died. Hit the bird. No fucking way. Yes. There's no the the and it was strongest like human my, being. It was from like in front of my entire family and my extended family, and then we like went on a walk, which I, I didn't really put the pieces together until I was <laughs> until I was a little older. Right after that happened, we went on a walk, and my uncle stayed back, and he was like going to save the bird. <laughs> he killed it. <laughs> that bird did not live. He was going to give it mouth like, to everyone mouth. Everyone was like, "Yeah, the bird flew away." <laughs> that thing was like dead as fuck as soon as I hit it. It fell out of the sky. With a wiffle ball? Yes. A wiffle ball is a hollow piece of plastic that has holes in it to make it go slower. Right when you got Big Poppy Jr. behind the bat. <laughs> I don't know, dude. You couldn't shoot a, a wiffle ball out of like a Gatling gun and kill a fucking... You th- could kill it. The birds are fragile. But so are wiffle balls. Wiffle balls do not go that fast. Wiffle ball wouldn't even make a mark if it got hit as hard as it could at a human being. Yeah, that's probably true, honestly, but it killed the bird. I don't know what you want me to say. It killed the bird. Your parents probably just wanted you to feel tough. 
Like, oh yeah, you you definitely killed that bird. So I watched it fall to the ground, and then like it was like struggling, like trying to get back up, and that thing was so dead. If it wasn't dead, then it was gonna die within the next minute. It was just stumbling back and forth. No, it like was like flailing around, like it couldn't even stand up. Did it like break an arm or anything like I that? I think so. I think it broke the wing. Damn. And at that point, you just gotta step on it. You should have rehabbed it. No. You thought I was a monster for going to a cockfight. At least they weren't <laughs> dying at my hands. At least I wasn't the fucking executioner. You were a monster for going to the cockfight. I was Chickens just part of the eating each other. I was just part of the crowd. <laughs> so strange. You like bet on that? Just kidding. You don't have to say. I couldn't. I it was they were only betting in Spanish. I would have uh, bet on it, but like they were just taking bets live in Spanish. I, I don't have good enough Spanish to be able to bet on that kind of shit. I, I would have though. I have good enough Spanish. Would you have gone to an execution uh, back in the day? No. Uh, depends on who it is. Like at the end of the Ted Bundy tapes, like they all go to the, there's, it's like in Florida and they're like, it's like, looks like they just fucking, it looks like a tailgate for like a, the Super Bowl. <laughs> I think that's how executions used to be. Yeah. And everyone, the guy comes out and he just gives them like a wave and everyone goes nuts. Ted Bundy did? No. Like the guy. Oh, the executioner. The executioner gives him a wave. Like the he's, he's dead. He's just a superstar. No, he, got, I think he got the chair, but still, I think don't can't you go to the chair? People like would sit like three rows deep at the chair or at like a lethal injection and just like probably, watch. but with a case that big, I'm I'm assuming it was probably overpacked. Oh, there was like a there stadium. was like thousands of people there. They they had to get Webster Hall and yeah. just sell it out. That's crazy that there used to be a thing. People, I mean, but that's the thing. Like people like that probably don't give it. Like I don't really get the whole like death penalty thing because it's like. Ted Bundy would either have spent his entire life in prison or he would have died in prison. Like, or he would have gotten the death penalty. Like, he's going to die either way in jail. Like, who gives a fuck if it's now or in 20 years? Yeah, people are just uh, vindictive. They want, they, they want an eye for an eye. Yeah, Charles Manson died recently, right? Did he? Yeah. I thought he was still posted up making spiders out of hair that people <laughs> sent him in envelopes <laughs> and shit. Women no. loving him. No, that's crazy. The The... I don't know. The whole Goths thing across weird. America flicking their bean to Charles Manson. <laughs> they He's got an a letter ugly back. dude, too. Yeah. Ugly <laughs> ass dude. Charles Manson's busted as fuck, bro. <laughs> ugly ass dude, bro. Don't kill me, but yeah. uh, All the shit, you're like, fugly. Charles Manson was whatever. The Ted Bundy thing I didn't really understand. I never really understood like the whole like oh, he's so handsome, which is why he got away with all these murders. It's like, no, it seemed like everyone else was just like really stupid. <laughs> like everyone involved in like but that was also him. the gilded age of murder. Like, anyone could murder anybody. You could get yeah. away with so much shit back then. The fact that 40% of murders are still going unsolved yeah. today. Like, think about what it was like back then. Yeah. You probably could, like, kill they, like, someone who they, lived like, with you. They, like, got a description of him. They had, like, a perfect drawing of him, and they had his car. And they just, like, couldn't get him. <laughs> can't. We can't. Yeah. <laughs> Not enough evidence. Yeah. We can't make this bust. And then they pulled him over and he just had like 10 murder weapons in his car. <laughs> the founding fathers made it tough for the, for you to pin a murder on yeah, somebody. Yeah. Like, you actually have a right to do that. You actually have the right to carry a gun and have a dead body in your trunk. Yeah. Unless they find the head. Wasn't that the, the Fred Durst? Or no, not Fred Durst. Robert Durst. Uh, do you remember the Robert Durst documentary? No, I've never seen that. Basically, he chopped off somebody's head. They could never find the head, so they never could pin the murder on him. He, like, threw the head in a river, and since they didn't have the head, like, they couldn't pin the murder on him. That's crazy. I think, the I think like, if you kill someone, though, and hide in the body, and just, like, the constant fear that someone's going to find the body would be, like, so shitty. Yeah. You're probably driving back to that spot, like, every morning, making sure it's still there. I feel like that's a surefire way to get caught, though. I, yeah. I feel like that's kind of a tell. Keep they always the find s- the body. Do they? Yeah. No, they only tell you about when they find the body. They only that's the the PR from the police department. That's PDPR. They just wanted to make it look like they're finding the bodies, but they're not telling you about the bodies they never found. And those are the people that are fucking getting human trafficked and they have to <laughs> Did you see that there's like a new online poker game or some shit? Like a new online gambling thing is banned in the US. Oh yeah, like the Nelk boys were playing it and shit. Is were it they that? playing it? Is it that one? It's like these women tellers, but they think that they're all like being human trafficked, that they think that they're like tied to their chairs or something. One of the women passed out in her chair and they had to like bring her out with the chair. And they're like, why are they bringing the chair with her? They think that these women are like tied to the chairs as they're like dealing these online games or some shit like that. I'm familiar with that. And yes, they are. They are human trafficking. Yes. As a gambling dude, you would fucking know. What's What's the game called? 
Well, no they, limit hold. Wait, wait. I'm so <laughs> lost. Is this part of the game? No. This is a. This is a. This is a added bonus. That's so weird. Yeah, human trafficking. You're like a weirdo if you're human trafficking. <laughs> yeah, that shit's not right. Bro. That shit's not. Co- or just super uncool. Like if you're human trafficking, cut that shit out, man. <laughs> Son of a boy, dad podcast told you. To. <laughs> All right, leave that shit behind because that shit's not right. You're super sus if you're human trafficking. Like if you're kidnapping a woman in the 90s and drugging her for over three decades and tethering her to a chair to make her play some kind of online video game, stop it. Just That's stop so doing that. That's so weird. When, when did this happen? Recently? Yeah. I think it's actually just... We're in, in the midst of it. It's oh, banned wow. by the United States, but it's got to be going on in other countries. What's it didn't called, it, They just banned some other... Didn't they just ban some other gambling thing? The one that like Steve Will Do It was doing where he was making like millions of dollars every day? Oh, yeah. And it was, it was just like... You had to you click just, to get like out. It was like slot machines, right? Yeah. 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 And Steve was making millions. I think he was losing millions too, though. They would just play it until like they won, and then they would post the clip of him winning. That's like the that's like the cops finding the bodies. Like they'll look for bodies until they find one, and, <laughs> and then, then they'll, they'll post just the post about it, and then they'll just be like, "Oh, clip look, that. we found this body <laughs> <laughs> on his dash cam." Clip, clip that. that shit. Clip that, <laughs> clip that shit. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> a cop in a shootout <laughs> yelling into his dash cam. <laughs> clip that. <laughs> He's just streaming. <laughs> oh my god, clip that dude. That's probably happened. I really just shot three dudes. There's probably there's probably been a cop who's like a Twitch streamer. He's like Twitch streaming on the side and he's like posted up at like a shootout kneeling down. And he's like, thanks for the bits. <laughs> he's one shot on yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> Big titties 200. Thank you for the subscription. <laughs> How he's just dodging bullets. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Dude, I mean, it's kind of like it kind of makes sense as an idea that all cops dash cams should be live. Should be live. They pro it will probably happen one day. It would help with transparency, but also <laughs> like the clips would be incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Clip that shit. Clip that. Oh my god. After did you see what I just down. did? Holy fuck. <laughs> After like arresting like I don't even know. I'm trying to think of like a scenario where that would be awesome. They like barrel roll in their car yeah. and like dive oh, out shit. to like <laughs> clip that shit. Clip that. I just stop the shoplifter. Clip that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Imagine just like a police officer like brutally beating the fuck out of like a like a shoplifter. Clip that. Clip Put that. that oh shit. my god, that's making my reel. Yeah. <laughs> Put that on the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> That's gotta have happened. A di- like, there's gotta be some sort of cop out there who's like posting clips on like day on like Patreon. Subscribe. Like they should like have him, like planting drugs in someone's car. <laughs> the way that NCAA athletes have been able to like get their own likeness. Yeah, cops should be able to get their own likeness. Yeah. They, they should, should be able to fight for their, their own. They should be able to like put out clips of their own. So they shit can or, like, stop making like TikToks. <laughs> sell their jerseys and their badges and shit. Yeah. Cop like TikToks are the worst. What, when they just dance or like yeah. in their car? Yeah, it's like him, them and their partner. And they're just like sitting there like lip syncing like fucking Jack Harlow songs. <laughs> and it's just singing industry baby. The worst TikToks. The, wor- the worst TikToks are the ones that are like uh, the lawyers. Oh, like because they're super well produced. Yeah. But they're like, if you ever get pulled over by a cop, yeah. this is what you should yeah, do. And then they zoom into them in a yeah. car. Yeah. Being shit faced. Yeah. Are you yeah. shit faced behind the wheel? Yeah. This is a way to get out of it. Stop. Have you just hit it Let and me run talk someone? to my lawyer first. <laughs> like you just murdered six people. <laughs> Never answer any questions if you run over a small family. <laughs> That's your first step. If you ever get arrested for jaywalking, this is what you should do. Learn it's always this. the same dude too yeah it is and he's got numbies oh yeah he's got an incredible it's because like little kids see that and they're like oh okay i'm gonna save these for when i'm older right and, and then, you know there's some little kid out there who's like tried that shit and, and well those little kids turn into the one steering wheel his dad's at the steering wheel and he's like blackout drunk <laughs> talking to the cop and the kid's like scrolling through his liked tiktoks trying to find <laughs> trying to find what to do dad, don't, dad, dad don't dad, tell dad, him you don't have this. to answer him daddy <laughs> yeah <laughs> You don't have to tell him anything, Daddy. <laughs> you're within your rights. Ask him if you're being detained, Daddy. <laughs> this, this lawyer I follow on TikTok says you don't have to do anything they tell you. Am I being detained, Daddy? <laughs> don't you not have to take a breathalyzer, but they just arrest you on the spot if you don't? I think it's state by state. 
Yeah. I think I heard that. I think I learned that in driver's head. Like you don't have to do a breathalyzer test, but if you don't, then they have the right to, I don't know if they arrest you, but they take your license. I think in New Jersey, you don't have to submit and they'll just like take your car and maybe there's like a blood work thing or something like that. Yeah. But in Pennsylvania, they will lock you up right away. You can't yeah. refuse it. Even those kids, though, who wind up just learning everything that the lawyer teaches them, they definitely go outside police stations and just like film the cops until cops come outside and they're like, what are you doing here? Oh, yeah. It's like, I know my rights. Those are my favorite rabbit holes to fall into. I'll watch those videos for like three hours straight. Yeah. I I know my rights thing is funny because no one ever actually does that shit in the moment. You would probably do some shit like that, though. <laughs> no, I know that you're I know the cheat codes. You're definitely the kind of person to get pulled over and you've instantly just got six cameras out. No, I, I told you I used to be like that. And Live now streaming. I just I go belly up on the cops. I'm just like, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Do you need your your dick rubbed? Do you need your badge polished, sir? Because I can help you out with that. <laughs> I got pulled over like three times in one week going into college. And that was like, I at eventually I started to think that they had like a hit out for me. Like I thought like they were like, oh, there he is. Let's pull him over. <laughs> You're just like paranoid. Three, I got like a $300 ticket. You just see like helicopters in your rear view. And yeah. It's like, they're fucking following me. Dude, I got, I remember driving past a cop and I was going so slow and I see the cop turn on, like he's like, he's like facing, he's, I'm driving the way, the way that he's like facing. So. There goes a little Sasquatch yeah. again. And I go and I'm around I'm the corner get him now. and I look in my rear view mirror and he's in my rear view mirror and he's turning around to follow me. And then he pulls me over and he's like, you have a headlight out. <laughs> and you, I was like, I know you just busted for me, me for this yesterday. <laughs> what happened to the double jeopardy officer? I used to be so paranoid about the police in high school. Like I would go to my friend's house and they would all like smoke weed. And then my headlight would be out and I would be like, dude, like, I wouldn't even smoke weed, but I'd be like, dude, like they're gonna smell the weed on me, and I'm gonna get pulled over because of my headlight. And it, the ride home, I would just be like, a, it would just be a battle with myself the entire way. Completely ruins the weed smoking experience. I would just be so convinced that I was gonna get pulled over because of my headlight, and then they were gonna smell the weed, and then I'd have to be like, oh, my friends were smoking weed, I wasn't, and I'd give them the address to my friend's house. Yeah, you would have to dox your friends. You'd be left with no choice. Do we have any fucking ads? Yeah. Yeah, bro, because I don't have them on my phone. So maybe my phone's broken. Maybe mm-hmm. I just didn't. I update. hope. I hope my phone is broken. Mm-hmm. It must be my I phone being broken because case. I know you sent them. Mm-hmm. I know you I'm sent them. Positive of at least that part of it. That go off the Wi-Fi, bro. I'm not on that Wi-Fi. Never have been. Go on the Wi-Fi. I don't have the Wi-Fi password. At the at the company that I work with, I don't have the uh, Wi-Fi. I don't even password. have a laptop. Should we just free ball the ads? No, we'll spit I'll just them. cut this. I'll, I'm sending it to you right now. No, no, don't do not cut this. Nothing gets cut. Crack an un, uncuttable uh, joke real quick, Sass. Some some relatable shit. <clears throat> Give me something out of the out of your five. I don't know, man. I'm sick, I think. I think I might have COVID. What were you doing that would put you in a position? Even though it doesn't exist. <laughs> the pandemic. The scandemic. <laughs> That's a fucking fact, bro. I had some. Uh, I honestly think I might have it though. I, I'm, I'm sick. If my eyes feel heavy, I'm just gonna nap for the rest of the episode, bro. Why just would you get in close quarters with me, knowing that you got the cocoa? I know, do you think I that's safe? I don't have it. Do you think it's safe? I don't have it, bro. I'm vaxxed. Except apparently, you can get it these days. Well, I think you it's think it's safe? simply safe is how I would I oh, would label I think it. It's safe. <laughs> I yeah, think. I think it's simply safe. Wait. What? Yeah. Yes. It's about security, really. And if you're tired of going to the spy shop to buy your own security, mm-hmm. if you're tired of having to call on the law and hoping that they clip it whenever they're catching the perp that's running through your house, just go to Simply Safe. Simply Safe Home Security. With, when Simply Safe home security founders Chad and Eleanor Lawrence designed their first security system in their kitchen, they did it for a very personal reason. Their friends had just had their home broken into. They were struggling to find a security system that was simple to set up and it would make them feel safe again. And if you're listening to us, if it, if you're a homeowner, if you're renting, if you're in college and you live in a house where you're sure that people are about to break into your shit, set up Simply Safe, get Simply Safe, and make Simply Safe part of your life because they've been making people feel safe. And that's what Simply Safe has been doing since that moment 
15 years ago when they first kicked things off. A passion to protect people not only drives every engineering detail in the product, but it motivates every interaction with the customers. And the thing is, Simply Safe just makes it so easy. It's about two minutes to customize the system on their website, simplysafe.com slash sun. Simply Safe has highly trained security experts and it, and it's just good shit is how I is how, is how I would go it, watch the accountant with Ben Affleck that's what the Simply Safe uh, experts are like it's a guy with a 50 cal gun yeah, that he's just holding in house. his shoulder if you just if you just ring Simply Safe they'll come into your house and they will <laughs> they'll shoot they're shooting everybody a genius accountant who has aim like Chris Kyle will yeah. fucking snipe the fuck out of whatever bad guy even if it's just your landlord and he's coming into your house without your permission simply safe will deal with them execute them and get rid of the body <laughs> with no fuss There's and absolutely nothing no simply safe hurt hates more than a nosy landlord and they're the fucking worst and, and usually- the best part is it's legal yeah, they exactly. Can kill what they can kill, and it's legal. You stand your mm-hmm. ground, or there's some there's some name for that, and some th- something domain. Stand your ground. There, no, there's something else. There's like uh, castle law. Oh, is that what murder. it's called? Castle law. Castle law. Castle law. What the fuck is what is it called? Where you can just kill anybody in your own house? It's in like Florida, I think. It's like a Florida thing. Castle doctrine. They got their own laws. The doctrine that states that if a person's dwelling or occupied building is being invaded or burglarized, the occupant can use deadly force without a warning shot. (laughs) That's awesome. How fire is that? Holy shit. That's in like half the United States. Yeah. And uh, if you're in that half, you can get Simply Safe. And if you're in the other half, you can also get Simply Safe. And as a listener of Son of a Boy Dad, you can even get 20% off your Simply Safe security system and your first month for free when you sign up for interactive monitoring service. Just visit simplysafe.com slash sun to customize your system and start protecting your, your home, home and, and family. family. That's, That's simplysafe.com slash sun. Good shit. Cheers. Cheers to Simply Safe. They've been keeping us keeping us safe for fucking fuck knows how long. I've actually got Simply Safe at my desk. Because I know people are stealing shit from me all the time. They're well, trying to steal my ideas. You, <laughs> you saw Frank the Tank getting robbed too of his good ideas. I did, and uh, shit, shit went south. Should we do the uh, the crate challenge? Just us? Yeah, the son of a boy dad crate challenge. We should. We should start selling crates. Yeah. We should start selling 49 packs of crates. <laughs> With our faces on them. If you really support son of a boy dad, set up a SOBD crate. That would be cool. That'd be so fucking fire. That would be a lot of crates, though. Also, I don't know how that would work. How would you do the B? You could. You could do it, bro. Lowercase. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Wow. You could. S O B D. -D. Sabada. Sobbed. 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 When was the last time you sobbed? Not for a really long time. I haven't cried in a while. Probably last year. I went through a crying drought when I was about your age. Yeah, I, I cried a lot last year in college. <laughs> Don't even get me into it. And uh, why? Uh, social injustice. Yeah, I think I just had no friends. It's just really lonely. Dang. It's really just fucking lonely. That was probably when. It just kind of felt like I had no one on my side, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bro. Who can't relate to that shit? Just kind of felt like I had no one on my side. But that loneliness, that trauma, will make you. You're funny. Yeah, it'll make you, you your get funniest. a lot funnier. Your tweets start hitting a little different. That's how you got hired at at Barstool. Yeah, pretty much. And then since much. then, you've been so happy that your your tweets have gone downhill. No, noticeably, it is funny how that works. Though, like the happier you get, the worse your comedy is. So it's <laughs> tough to it's you got to it's important to stay depressed. It's you have to like my doctor was like, "Go oh, go up to 100 milligrams on Zoloft," and I was like, "I'm gonna stay at 50." Uh, I'm gonna stay at 50 because you're tending to your depression yeah. like a garden. You yeah. have to like water your depression yeah. and like uh, give it the right amount of sunlight or lack of sunlight. What I've actually been doing is I befriend a lot of people that are in hospice. Yes, and I become really close with them, and then when they die, I'm like, "All right, this is exactly what I needed." Perfect, perfect. Or like, if someone's not dying fast enough, you kind of oh, need I pull to, the plug. yeah, usher them along, yeah, feed them poorly, <laughs> yeah, or just make them really sad. I'll get them the 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 Travis Scott meal. <laughs> what is it? The sawi? What is it? The sawiti. Sawiti. The sawiti meal. The sawiti. A meal. double cheeseburger, a sprite. 
four nuggets. I could go and for a fry. I'm hungry. Yes, you are, bro. I'm fucking starving. Yes, I'm on, bro. A, I'm on a no carb thing right now, though. You need carbs, though. I said that's not true because I've already eaten a lot of carbs today. I know, and you need carbs for your workouts. But you've been out of the gym for how long? Three weeks? No, a week. <laughs> <laughs> it was not, out, it was 10 days last week i've been out of the gym for a week max it was 10 days last week and it's, you prob- not been it's probably been like it's probably been like 10 days that's how you fall off i know but i'm <laughs> going today and i'm going strong except i did forget my pre-workout at home which sucks that fucking sucks do you take bro. pre-workout or no no but uh i used to yeah i love pre-workout it just uh you're not taking the right shit. That's it, why. No, it. I was taking too many shits. Yeah, it changes the, the competition, right. the composition of your shits. You're not taking the right stuff. You start pooping out a rainbow. You know, yeah, because you're not taking. You need to take a clean pre workout. It sounds like that Israel Kiwanuka song or whatever. You're just somewhere over the rainbow. Anytime you shit, <laughs> you get elevated out of your toilet by the fucking rainbow that shoots out of your ass. You this, gotta, you gotta take. You gotta start taking send pre workout. Send it's clean. You would love real drugs. No, that's what I'm saying, bro. If you're if you get I don't this, need them, I don't need them. That's the thing. But we used to, I mean, you're talking about putting stuff in your nose. I would do a line of Jack 3D before I went out. Jack of 3D, <laughs> I'd do a, a fat line of Jack fat 3D. line of uh, of I am God. <laughs> what, Billy it? Football has a has a pre workout on his desk called I am God. Shut the fuck I up. I swear to God, <laughs> shut the I fuck up. God. Does it stand for something? No. It's just the name of it. There's like, there's like, I am God. Anything, there's like bro. dark matter. Um, dark matter is illegal, I think, though, because it has what is that? It's like some illegal ca- caffeine form. We're definitely in the stage of like uh, judging books exclusively by their covers. No, I, I, I was looking at Billy Football's desk for pre workout, and I was like, hopefully, he has something that's like 150 milligrams of caffeine. Because I was like, anything over that is too much for me. I'll do 200 if I have to, but I don't like taking 200 milligrams of caffeine at once. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah, a lot. yeah, that's too much. And that actually- You're I, jittered honestly, out after a half that of That makes coffee. me tired. Like, that makes me more tired is taking like that much caffeine because I just feel like drained because it's so much. Yeah, it's a lot. But having, uh, my point is that just having a crazy name on one of these things will make it sell. Or like ha- putting fuck it's for in like, your book title will fucked. make it sell. You have way too much of a caffeine tolerance if you're taking 400 milligrams of caffeine and being like, okay, with that, you should die. But I think that those people are, uh, first of all, caffeine, people crush caffeine. Caffeine is, I think that the two strongest drugs out these days are caffeine and Victory Golden Monkey. What is Victory Golden Monkey? It's those, it's a, those like super heavy beers. Oh, 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 you're definitely one of those guys that's like... Your like parents are mad at you for smoking weed, and you show them like the picture of like the spider on caffeine versus weed. <laughs> what is it? A spider web <laughs> of what it of what of it what does it, of what it does when it's on caffeine versus weed. Oh, does caffeine it, is the strongest drug there is? Uh, is it? Does a spider like go like super yeah, fast and yeah. and just knocks everything out real fast? No, the spider is like the the web's all fucked up when it's on caffeine. And the spider's on, on a trampoline doing backflips. Yeah. <laughs> when it's on weed, it's like a perfect spider web. Yes, dude, I hundred percent believe it. Did you you wrote like your persuasive essay in eighth grade about why le- weed should be legal? I didn't get into weed until much much later in my life. Yeah, you didn't get into weed until you were like eighteen, right? Yeah, yeah, it's way sweeter. Late bloomer. No, it's way sweeter because I allowed my brain to develop. You should start smoking weed when you're in sixth grade. Mm, I'd say close to fourth grade. <laughs> yeah. If so you, you really want to grow so you into battle it. battle through all of the demons, all of the all of the negative weed demons, and well, then you don't end up like me. You'll just be able to say you're depressed earlier. People are so depressed now because there's so much excess that the only thing that we can have now is sadness. That even like people used to actually not have enough of some things, like not have enough love from their parents or not have enough food to eat. Spit that shit. But now. Go on. Go on. Now. Continue. Now. There's too much love, bro. Too much love. Parents should stop loving. There needs to be more hate in this world. Thank you, bro. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. Where where, Where can we start some hate? I think it should start in the comment section. No, 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 no. Let's start there. No, the comment section's all love, bro. Has it been a lot of lot of positivity in the comment section? Yeah, what's that all about? Or even personal messages, people reaching out on a personal tip, being like, "They love the pod. This, this shit is great." They yeah, say. if you love the pod, then make sure your friends and family are listening to it too, as we can bump these numbers. Yes, bro. We're Spotify, to take Spotify, down, we're Spotify. To take down Joe Rogan. No, why Spotify? Just so we can like 
It's diversifying our portfolio. Oh, uh, okay. If we we're cr- heavy on Apple right now, I think. We crush on Apple, but let's crush on Spotify too. Like we Apple's getting we were on top to fifty or huh? top hundred, top well, hundred episodes on Spotify. Were we? Yeah. Bro, good shit. for us, dude. We don't really look at the numbers, though. We don't no, really care about the feedback or anything we like that. That's, that. That's, this my, is all, we do this just for the love. Other people's love opinions of, of me is none of my business, man. That's what I always say as did I'm scrolling you, through the comment section crying. Did you ever do any um, any roast battles, and com- like stand-up comedy roast battles, or did you just do rap battles? I uh, When I lived in L.A., I used to go to the roast battles almost every week. Yeah. I fucking loved that shit. I never got up on stage, but I would judge them a lot of the times. Oh, really? Yeah. One time it was me, fucking Mike Lawrence, Jeff Ross, and David Tell were the judges. Oh, wow. It was like the most <laughs> star-studded <laughs> That's fucking... That's crazy. It was the That's most... That's awesome. Star- Mike Lawrence was the... Uh, he had won the first season of roast battles, and he was like the second roast master general at the roast place in L.A. Uh, and then like fucking obviously uh, Jeff Ross is that dude for roasting. Yeah. And Did that shit kind of die out? The roast battle comedy aspect? I don't know. I They used they would have like a live stream. It's like the funniest joke writing that I'd ever yeah, uh, I like been part it's of. Like quick. It's quick. Yeah, it's quick. It's fat. It's like uh, you just have to tell your joke, kind of get out. It's a... Uh, and it's mean. Yeah. It's just really mean. Yeah. I've been watching a bunch of them. Uh, apparently they used to do it at the stand in mm-hmm. New York. In New York. Yeah. There's just the, the dudes are fucking, the dudes are hilarious yeah. and, ro- and the women are hilarious and ruthless. Yeah. And uh, it was, I, I can't Not imagine anymore, them stopping. Bro. Not anymore. You saying we can't do that anymore? We can't fucking cross that. Yeah, that fucking Biden's in office. Biden actually ended all the roast battles. <laughs> uh, no more roast battles. They're called love battles <laughs> now. <laughs> just preach positivity. He just That's wanted what to end need. all we the a, wars. We need a traditional roast battle between like a U.S. Marine and like a Taliban soldier. <laughs> or they just to end, end this shit once and for all. They're just like busting on yeah. each other. Like uh, they're just doing yo mama jokes on each yeah. other like fucking Wilmer Valderrama. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the fucking. That's how we'll get peace in the Middle East. We just need two Muslim sects. We need a, a Sunni and a Shiite fucking teeing off. We need to that that'll get get shit uh, calmed down in Israel too. Fucking yeah, a roast just, battle. Yeah, the Palestinians. I don't think I'd be able to do. Eh, I'd probably be able to do a roast battle because I think I can handle. Like I don't really care what people say about me. Well, in person, not online. typical <laughs> privileged white male pr- uh, perspective. Like if someone said I was ugly or something on stage, I'd be like, okay, and then I'd be like. I am white. I am a bum. <laughs> <laughs> you should do a roast battle and then just start rapping. I think that that's why I didn't want to do it because they would always make people rap. Oh, really? They would like, uh, there was another battle rapper, the dude Sharon from Wild and Out who yeah. I battled, who actually has, he autism. T- raps autism. about autism and it, it's a fucking superpower with battle rap. Yeah, we've all, it, like, makes you right, we've, all heard, we've all heard the battle. <laughs> really? Because I only put it on TikTok and I thought you didn't have No, TikTok. it's on some of what I Twitter actually. And also, I've watched the entire battle. <laughs> that is true. And I got in his ass. He's got like a million views on YouTube. But he would go on to... Uh, this guy. <laughs> Stop. This guy. Fucking A-list. <laughs> Stop it. But uh, can, you get a, can you get a tell on the pod? Um, Probably not. I don't think that he uh, likes people. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't think that he... Uh, well, gener- we don't like him either. He was. Nate, let that be known. I was. Uh, I was with somebody this past weekend that works at. Uh, they were telling a story ab- about David Tell, and it was like this uh, Marine who was like so excited about him, and like he was like hugging him or something. He was like, "What in the Marines? They didn't teach you personal space or something." <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I mean, I get. That. Why was he hugging him? Because he was. It's literally his hero. People just don't know how to act around their heroes. So yeah, like those. Never meet your hero. Never meet your heroes. Never meet your heroes. They might roast you. That's why I was always so weird when I met Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I never know how to act around him. You're just like sweaty. I, Dave, I saw what you gave John's on Bleecker Street. Yeah. Oh my God. This oh, week, oh yeah. This weekend, we so on. Was that Friday? Yeah. On Friday, me, Owen, Jack McCarthy, and Nick go to. We were just like going out to get like a, to get some food. We went to this pizza place. In, wow, must have. Uh, Lost my invite in the mail. Yeah, you did. Oh. Don't think you were in, actually. Uh, I wasn't in on the pizza. We w- Where was it? East Village? Uh, or West Greenwich Village? Greenwich Village, I believe. Yeah, we went to some pizza place in Greenwich, Greenwich Village. And uh, the, we sit down. We're like the only people like, you want to sit inside, outside. We're like inside. We sit down. Not a lot of people inside. And they sat us outside. Oh, yeah. We sat. We were like, we'll sit inside because it's really hot outside. We sit inside. 
with a massive window, like a like a lookout window to outside. Bay window type and of we deal. Were, so we're sitting outside basically. <laughs> and uh she the waitress comes up and she's like, Are you guys bar stool guys? <laughs> and we were like, Yeah, yeah, we are actually. And she was like, oh, yeah, like we get a lot of people coming in here to like because Dave wrote that because Dave raided this place. <laughs> Wait, so she and thought by Barstool out, guys. Yeah, that she- so we thought she meant like you guys work at Barstool. And we were like, yeah. And then it turned out that she just meant like, oh, are you fans? Are you guys fans? <laughs> she was like, oh, yeah, you guys like I, she's like, I usually have a pretty good idea of telling who who's a fan and, and not. And we were well, like, Viva, damn. Man. <laughs> we were like, damn. <laughs> I, I mean, you do look roasted. the part. You do look the part for sure. I think I might have been wearing this sweatshirt. A bar stool no, sports not even. Dang. No, none of us were wearing any bar stools no. now, actually. The only time I've been to John's on Bleecker Street, and there's no exaggeration. It'd be easy to exaggerate this, but there was a line out the door, and there were probably five different parties in line outside of me and my fiance at the time. And uh, literally every one of them, we could hear each one of their conversations was talking about Dave and Portnoy and like what Dave gave this place and how they were there because of Dave and they would strike up conversations with one another and we were the only people not talking about Barstool in the line and I was just trying to uh, um, like not be noticed like I didn't want to I didn't want I just wanted to be able to enjoy pizza in peace without it having something to do with your hero Dave Portnoy (laughs) yeah 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 it was very weird though salute to the boss man it took us a long time to like understand what was happening (laughs) <laughs> we were because like, you thought you were going to we get like, a discount. No, we were like, "Oh, how did she know?" Like, none of us like have any barstool stuff on or anything. And then we were like, "Oh, she thinks we're fans. Like, she thinks we're like Dave Portnoy fans." No, no, man. We we work that. We work yeah. at. Bar- yeah. Oh, sure you do. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, no, we get a lot of people who work oh, there. Yeah, we get a lot of the athletes coming in. <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of the barstool. Athletes. We get a lot of viceroys coming through here. <laughs> <laughs> this place is really big amongst viceroys. <laughs> viceroys we love this. We actually run the uh, the KB and Nick best moments YouTube page. <laughs> <laughs> the anus meme. Page. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we crushed the memes. How was the pie? It was really good. It was actually very good. <laughs> you familiar with the uh, traffic barrel here for assistance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all of us. We all take part. He does the night shift. I do the morning <laughs> shift. It's you like never know. Baby. You never know when Dave's gonna tweet, <laughs> and you need to be there to tweet traffic. We all have notifications assistance. on, but yeah. Just in case, can, can never be too vigilant about traffic barrel. No, no. Fuck. Fucking Dave, man. Dave needs to hire that fucker. <laughs> the traffic barrel guy. Oh, I know. Oh, what about uh, Massive Injustice? When you're in Wyoming. Red Rhino? No, that wasn't in Wyoming. That that was at the Buffalo meet and greet. Oh, fuck. What happened? Some dude came up to me and oh, he was yeah, like, yeah. he's like, dude, Red Rhino, I fucking love that kid. And I was like, yeah. Red he Rhino? Like, he was like, bro, did you see that shit he did when his hair got wet and he called it Wet Rhino? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I didn't. He's the first dude who's got to make you feel like an OG. Yeah, I mean, I don't have anything against him. He seems like a nice kid. He's like a kid. Yeah, he's like... Not like me, bro. I'm an adult. But uh, talk to me when you hit 18. Okay? <laughs> then we'll talk. <laughs> there's just this... Uh, you just need to be aware that there's always someone new who's coming to try and take your spot. I know. Luckily... <laughs> And that's Rhino. Tough, tough spot to take. Well, when he's pretty good, man. Top earner. He's <laughs> pretty fucking good, man. I know. He, he seems like a nice kid. He's, I mean, it just. Would love to grab an underage drink with him sometime. <laughs> Would love to slam some underage brews with him. Yeah, hit up the Buffalo Wild Wings and yeah. fucking take down two towers it's on the 11th. Right. It's all right. We work, at, <laughs> we work at Barstool, so don't worry about the uh, ID thing. <laughs> IDs? <laughs> Does this work? Pull out my bar stool badge. <laughs> Viva. <laughs> Ever heard of it? Oh, sorry, man. You should have said something. Look, look. Here's how this is gonna go. Either you're gonna let us in, we're gonna get we're gonna drink until we pass out, or I'm gonna have my boy Dave come in here, he'll rate this place a zero point zero. You guys will be out of business for Or yeah, we'll put sound? this on bar stools in the morning. Yeah. This could be on bar stools tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll put this on bar stools. <laughs> how does that sound? Does that make sense to you? Are you getting a clear enough picture there? Yeah. Speaking of clear picture, <laughs> boy, I've been I've been rocking the shit out of my bare bottoms. Mm-hmm. Oh, is it? Do we have a bare bottom ad right now? Yes, that's perfect because I actually let I left my bare bottom shorts 
in this is going to be like this is going to be a great ad for them. I left my bare bottom shorts in Wyoming. We'll be the judge of that. I left my bare bottom shorts in Wyoming and I was legitimately like bummed out. I was like, dude, I don't want to leave without these because these are my favorite shorts that I have. They're like my best shorts. My buddy texts me yesterday and he's like, who left these shorts here? And he sends a picture of my bare bottoms. And I was like, oh, dude, those are my bare bottoms. I said, my bare bottoms, I was looking everywhere for those. And he said, my bare bottoms now. And Shut said, up. And I said, treat them well. Great pair of shorts. Best I've ever had. And then he texted like a couple hours later. And he was like, he was like, these bare bottoms are great. Better than Lulu. I like how there isn't a liner in them. Dude, that's, I mean. That's it, a good ad. We, we should also just end ha- the ad there. We haven't touched the, <laughs> I mean, that's perfect. We haven't touched the script yet. I'm also wearing bare bottoms right now. Dude, they're so, like, there was the best shorts I've ever had. And I hope they see this and I hope they send me another pair because I would love that. Same, because I crushed, uh, I bought a couple pairs of shorts right before I got these bare bottoms. And then I bought the bare bottoms and I don't wear the shorts that I bought. No, I bought like Patagonia shorts and I had to cut the liners out. They yeah. still don't even compare. And so I used the bare bottoms as a swimsuit while yeah. I was in Hawaii. Yeah. I was like jumping off waterfalls in my fucking bare bottoms. Yeah. They're great they, shorts. They dried fast. They look like, I mean, it was a short. It was a bathing also, suit. Also, the shirts make me look fucking jacked. Yes. The bare I bottoms are incredible. In those and that's before we get to the copy. Now we can jump into this fucking now copy. We'll now, now, we'll that now that we've in. Now that we've personally endorsed because bare bottoms is the fucking truth uh, it's a great brand. Yeah, incredible Good shorts too. Good incredible shorts. If you want, if you want your bulge enhanced, fucking cop the bare bottoms. Yeah, uh, your print, your print will look incredible. The internet's best deal on high quality and versatile menswear. Over ten thousand five star reviews, and we know why. I would give them a five star review at the fucking drop of a hat, at the drop of my bare bottom shorts. You can also get two made for summer lightweight tech tees and a pair of stretch shorts for under one hundred dollars. That's what I'm saying. These fucking deals are insane. It's 2021. Let's keep the shorts above the knees. I'm rocking with the seven inch inseam. It feels good. They also have a five inch inseam. Also uh, feels good. Also feels great. They're designed to transition from the couch to the gym to work or play. They really are my most versatile. I'm rocking a gray right now. They go with fucking everything. Yeah. They look good all the time. Giving back is at the core of what Bare Bottom does. They've donated over 100,000 pairs of shorts to children in need starting the summer. They will be donating school lunch for every item sold. They're ethical. It's good clothes. They look good. You will feel good. And right now our listeners can get free shipping on their first order of these super comfortable threads at barebottomclothing.com with code SUN. That's B-E-A-R, like the animal, bottomclothing.com. Use code SUN. Get free shipping on your first order. You will enjoy this clothing. That I fucking promise you. It's a promise. It's a promise. If you don't, I will you I will eat those fucking shorts. You can send them to me. Send them to me. I, I will, will literally eat them. I will douse them in syrup. But I'll I will actually wear them instead. And then that's I, how fucking comfortable they are. Fuck. <laughs> Holy fucking <laughs> shit. <laughs> that's how I felt when I put them on for the first time. Just <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> but I'm gonna power through, bro. Yeah. No piss break, no hunger. I don't know about no piss break, but <laughs> we'll no, see. Come on, bro. You, you've been crushing that water. I know, and the coffee. Ooh. Coffee makes coffee. me piss like nobody's business. Down there, brother. Coffee makes me piss fucking infinitely more than I would otherwise. I know. Coffee sucks. We're about to be traveling a lot. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. Rough and Rowdy coming up. If you're listening to this show, you should definitely go to buy rnr.com and check out the Rough and Rowdy. Don't. Don't even. Didn't know we're doing other ads. Don't even. <laughs> what do you have against Rough and Rowdy, bro? Nothing. Let's lay it all bare. Uh, nothing. Let's lay it all bare. Nothing. No. What, do you want to fight in Rough and Rowdy? Is that what you're saying? You want to fight somebody? <laughs> no, not at all. Because we could set that up. We people could set you love, up against people e. People love to like fight. People love to be like, oh, bro, fight me in Rough and Rowdy. People love in to say world? that about like content. In what world am like? I fighting anybody in Rough and Rowdy? <laughs> I'm a flight. I'm a flight guy. <laughs> flight me in Rough and Rowdy. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter is like a mental illness. <laughs> People on Twitter are fucking insane, dude. Isn't that your uh, app of choice? Yeah, but I'm like, I'm the I'm the voice you're a of, truth I'm the, seer. I'm the voice of reason. You on see Twitter. through all the bullshit. I don't play by the rules. You're the one who can diagnose the problems that are going on on. Twitter. I don't really go on Twitter that much anymore. I just tweet like once a once every couple of days now. It's a fucking slapper every time. 
Luckily I was gifted with the fucking Twitter fingers. <laughs> dude, fucking Kanye and uh, Drake. Oh yeah. That was crazy, dude. The, the Joker picture. And then uh, why Kanye, did he add push a T too? I think that he's to, to renew their old beef. Maybe he should have added you. I mean, we'll Photoshop that added Roan. Can I just say that <laughs> Kanye, if you try anything stupid, you're fucked. All right, it's gonna be Let's your head. Just, I'm just gonna go ahead and say quick: don't come at Drake. Yeah, if uh, you, if, it, if you if you if you want the best for yourself and your family and your career, <laughs> don't come at Drake. You're not gonna do that, okay? And We're you're gonna, gonna find out why. You'll We're find out why very quickly if you come at Drake, okay? And you saw that he gave out Drake's address. No, really. He put a, a like Yay. a screenshot of Drake's. Uh, <laughs> I feel like you have. Yeah, as, as like an A list celebrity, you have to have some sort of respect for that. Like, be like, you know what I mean? That he was what he doesn't want Drake giving out his address. But that was his point of doing the like smile or the Joker face or whatever. He's like, he oh, like, now I'm the never, Joker. You will never recover. <laughs> You think he just watched the Joker that day? <laughs> he must have. And he was like, I'm gonna he's like, I'm gonna amp this up to next level. Drake was like, I fucked your wife. And he was like, people will know where you live now. <laughs> Wait, did he say that he fucked Kim? I think that he uh and that the whole song where he's like clip cret down the block, made a left or whatever. I oh think. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, like yeah, him yeah. giving the directions, like you can go you can go left in, in Kanye's house too. Yeah. I don't know if people are really reaching on that. No, but no, like, that's oh dude, a, that's his house. That's been a thing for a while. Crept down the block, made a left, then made a right. It's like that's just like any direction. There's also was Kiki. That's the bar. That's the barstool offices. You can go down the block, make a left. What if that's what he was fucking talking about? Shit, he was talking about us. Yes, dude. Crept down the block, <laughs> made a right, made a left, <laughs> made a right, another left. And that's that's like, the that's the tricks in the office studio. <laughs> yes, yeah. dude. Holy shit. When you see Devlin's desk, <laughs> right. if you get to the snacks, you've gone too far. Yeah. <laughs> Turn back. <laughs> Turn around. But what are people? It's not, it's like, I bet Drake's house isn't like on the street. It's not like people are no, just going to be coming by. I actually by. saw a video this morning. So I was looking at Drake's Instagram story and he's like driving around in like a convertible. Laughing. Laughing. And I was like, Drake probably never gets like recognized in public because he. I bet he just doesn't go out in public. He's probably just in a tinted behind a tinted glass at yeah. all times. And he's also probably lives in like a community where everyone else in the community is also a list celebrities like yes. Calabasas. And uh, I think that in Los he Angeles, lives in Toronto, doesn't he? I think that's the the address that they doxed was a Toronto address. But I think that was also very public already. And I think that people in Toronto love Drake so much. First of all, you said Toronto, and it's Toronto, bro. Toronto. You've never been to Canada <laughs> and it shows, but I think that everybody in Toronto loves Drake so much that they would like kill for him. Like if someone's oh, yeah, like 100%. running into Drake's house, like he's they the would six God. And I, I, I saw that he's responsible for like 5% of Toronto's or of all Canada's tourism or something like really? that. Like he's responsible for like billions of dollars. Of There's a lot of famous something. people from Canada though. Bieber, Seth Rogen, Mike Myers, Cody Cow. Cody Co is? Yeah. Shut up. Uh, Trudeau. That's all I got. So there's six famous people from yeah. Canada. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot more that we don't know of. No, I think that we kind of just hit them all. Oh, Caitlin from The Bachelorette. Britney Spears. Van Vancouver. <laughs> Spears was for sure. But in uh, Los Angeles, aren't there like tours of celebrities' houses? You yes. like drive past yeah. celebrities' houses. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a crime tour bus type thing, but it's for like celebrities' houses. And uh, did you see the other day The, the Rock? Rock. Yeah. yeah, he pulled that up. Was on so them. sick. Hey, it's gonna make these guys day. Yeah. And they all were just like, Howdy, <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> you guys good? Yeah. Everything all right? It's all love, brother. Everything okay, guys? Like, imagine someone like being like, No, actually, things aren't okay. Yeah. The Rock. Stop asking stupid questions, Rob. All right, guys. You guys take care. Remember, start the week off strong. Finish it angry. <laughs> you guys all all right? All right. Okay, guys. <laughs> You'll all get one. Okay. All right. I actually love The Rock. What's not to love? I love his workout motivational videos. I love his cheat day videos. I've been clanging iron since I was 13 years old. I love the fact that he's a Hawaiian that uh, you can't make fun of. Yeah, you can't. They don't like when you make fun of Hawaiian people, and I'm not wrong. Owen even admitted that I was right. Yeah, I mean, I think that any group of people doesn't like when an outsider just like makes a gross stereotype about them, especially a negative one. Okay, bro.
Very, very woke of you, huh? I was what is gonna, this the fucking Biden podcast all of a sudden, bro? I was getting son murdered Biden for saying not son my a, president, son of a Biden supporter. Oh, on the TikTok, yeah, yeah, that shit got ripped apart. I think people thought I was like a big Trump supporter when up from that. <laughs> yes. How can you not read like satire? Yeah. Or and the same with uh, not my president. Like also, yeah, uh, we were like, literally we like changed the way we were talking and everything. Like it was obviously a joke. Both of us were were lying. And all the comments were like facts with like three crying emojis. <laughs> Or uh, he's not wrong. This though. dude's a beta cuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that one. That was a lot. I looked at it and it was like there was like fifteen thousand likes and then like four hundred comments. <laughs> I was like, damn, you're growing nuclear today. Yeah, you got four mil, four mil on a uh, rap battle. No, on a. Uh, it was when Trump got elected, and uh, I was just going through the streets. Uh, just like talking to the protesters in the streets. Oh, really? Was that recent or that had to have been recent? Oh, no. That was like four years ago. It was four years ago. <laughs> Jesus. I thought you meant when Trump got like when Trump lost. It was when he first got elected and people were just furious in the streets. I remember there, kids from my school like posting pictures crying on Instagram. This is uh, we want better. We want better. We want better. <laughs> 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 they're just fucking that's hilarious where shape. was that was that in new york that was in new york yeah it was like outside trump tower was that like right when you were is that like around when you started here it was like the first uh the first week dave came up he was like you said you wanted to do men on the street shit right and i was like yeah and then he was like well they're protesting in the street right now i was like i'll go fuck with people that's awesome i had to put that out just to be like uh I, I will fuck with the libs too. <laughs> <laughs> Though I may be a cuck, I will too fuck with the libs. <laughs> and uh, it was, I mean, I feel like so many people just expected Hillary to win that it was like a fruitful time to be able to make fun of people. But like you couldn't even do that shit because people are so divided. Like yeah. it's hard to even go you out to a crowd and shit. just fuck with people because like. I'm surprised you didn't get like hit. Yeah, there was one woman who came up to me and she was like, this is serious shit and it's not for you to slap dick around yeah. or something. But everybody else, for the most part, was like, uh, they would give me the time of the day. I got, I got uh, my, when I remember when like, when he was like, people were predicting him to win or predicting Hillary to win. You say Hillary? Hillary. Because you might as well with the fucking <laughs> Benghazi shit. <laughs> um, my See, people, let's. Clip that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll that'll do well. Anyway, we're becoming an alt right podcast <laughs> very quick. Just just t because we're scared of the comments. I know. <laughs> so, no, I'm I'm all, I'm all right. There's I love the, Hitler. The Trump rally. <laughs> Did you see the Trump rally shit this week? Yeah. yeah. Or or get it? Yeah, he was like, I'm a. Uh, I'm I vaxxed. wish I could. I'm do waxed the voice. and vaxxed. I did the voice so well when I was in Wyoming, and then I was trying to replicate it over and over, and I couldn't. What did you eat right beforehand? Maybe you had something lodged in your throat. What is it? Like, like, oh, I'm trying to think. I could do it in post. I could make your voice Trump. No, no, don't. Um, fuck. What was he saying? He was like. <sighs> it was like the vaccine. No, I can't do it because it's the it vaccine. I start talking like fucking Bob Dylan. <laughs> You do it. You have a really good one. Speaking of, you haven't spoke on that. No, oh, I have nothing to say about it. I don't really know what's going Your on. Your silence is deafening. <laughs> Everyone's sending me in. They're like, you Bro, educated this yourself is, about this is who every you part to? of his life. You've educated yourself about where he lived in New York City when he was 22 years everyone old. Everyone knows that. But, well, everyone knows that he was into 13 year olds now, too. And somehow your head is All in right. the sand. I haven't read up on it and I have no thoughts on it yet. He's in the flight logs. <laughs> the Epstein logs. <laughs> you know who else was in the Epstein logs? He was making little girls. Chrissy touch Jenner. Dick, being like, Chrissy How Teigen. does it feel? Chrissy Jenner. Chrissy Teigen was on the flight logs thirty six times. Did you that, know that? That doesn't surprise me. Frequent flyer. I could see Chrissy Teigen being the type, being like a Gisley Maxwell type of figure, where she was like collecting girls and like being like, Easily. "Hey, like, come uh, Easily. come get rubbed down." <laughs> That come documentary was so weird. Come catch this rub from my buddy. Ugh, creeps. Yeah. Weirdos. You saying pedophiles are creeps now? Yeah. I agree. They're not going to like that. <laughs> they are not going to like that. Here comes cancel culture for sass. 
You know that it's just bro. Uh, they're not creeps. It's actually it's a, a real disability. It's a sexual orientation. It's a sexual orientation. Just the way that some people are into guys, some people are into chicks, and some people are into underage people who can't tell the difference <laughs> and who can't do anything about it and aren't don't have fully formed brains. All okay? right, try. Let's let's end it with the Trump with the Trump impersonation. You go first. He's like, oh, we're gonna. We're going to get the vaccine. No, I can't. consider myself the luckiest man. And no, no that's, that was not that it. was Jim Carrey doing <laughs> <Luke> Carrey. <laughs> yeah. They're going to build a wall. No, we're going to build a wall. That was Alec Baldwin. Yeah, that's close. Though. I do. I did it so well. My friends were like, damn, where did that come from? And I was like, I don't we're know. We're going to build a wall. No, that sounds like <laughs> Joe Biden. It was a bill. <laughs> you did it the other bit. day. You did it on our podcast know, very well. I'm refusing to do it. Wow. No, wow. that's Owen Wilson. Wow. We're wow. going to build a wall. We're going to build a wall. That's decent. We're going to build a wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you want him to say? To get the vaccine. It's always like the same five impressions. It's Gollum, Peter from Family Guy, Trump. Owen Wilson, Wilson is such a cheap and easy one. Everyone can do Owen Wilson. I didn't see it really happening until I saw Francis doing it. And uh, I was probably like 17. <laughs> Everyone does Owen Wilson and it's now, so easy. There's someone, someone kids on coming up on my Instagram explore page and they're like, watch his expre- impressions. And it's like De Niro and Owen Wilson. And it's like, or, and probably Christopher Walken. Yeah, it was actually, he was on there too. De Niro is so easy. And people just love to be like, here's 50 impressions in one minute. Yeah. It's like, I don't give the a fuck. The only person who I've it's actually not seen impressive. who's like really impressive impressions is Jim Carrey. Jim when Carrey? When he does Jack Nicholson, he like turns himself into a different person. Have you ever seen the when he does what he does with his face? Yeah. He like rubs his face and he like comes out and his like, his like jaw changes and shit. <laughs> yeah, Jim Carrey. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> oh, like he's a transformer. Like he literally transforms into, into Jack Nicholson. Well, first off, you just shit on um, Bill Hader does good impressions too, doesn't he? Yeah, but you're forgetting a coworker of ours. Oh, Mulanaro. Mulanaro does good impressions, and so does Caliendo. Yeah. Are you asking me, or are you telling me? <laughs> I'm asking you. Yeah. 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 Well, you just don't like sports figures. No, I don't know any of. He the does sports such figures. a good that Michael Jordan. Anyone. That could be anyone for me. It doesn't change anything. I consider myself the luckiest man in the world. His Jordan is spot on. It sounds exactly <laughs> like Michael Jordan. Old white man, Michael Jordan. I mean, who else does good impressions? Bill Hader does good impressions, I think. I think it's like the least, um, or it's just a funny skill, but like ever trying to turn impressions into a joke. Yeah, or a joke or like a Shane Gillis career. does a good does a good um He does a good Trump Trump and he did it on stage when we saw him and it was very funny. Or uh Nick Mullen, Steve Harvey. Oh my god, Nick Mullen, Steve Harvey is literally the funniest thing I've ever seen. I actually have it. Do you think we can play it without getting in trouble? Can we get copyrighted for that? No, nah, don't play it. Don't play it. Oh, it's so funny. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I literally recorded it on my phone so I could have easy access to watch it. You could just watch it on your own. Yeah. When you're feeling down. Damn. Yeah, Nick Mullen does really good impressions. I forgot about that. He does like an impression of everybody. His Bill Burr impression is so good. You think he'll do a, an impression of, of bro, one day? Bro, bro. Are you doing an impression of his impression? No, I was doing an impression of Bill Burr. Oh, okay. Bro. No, he's like, <laughs> dude, I feel like I'm sitting across from Bill Burr right now. <laughs> that shit was uncannable. Because always says bro. That was uncanning. I can't do any impressions. I'm not an impressionist. Yeah. I you're, wish I could, though. You're more of a photorealist. You just give a slice of life. Um... Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll Buy some back. merch. Buy some merch. Buy some merch. Hats are, new- hats are back in stock. Hats are back. black now. Hats are black. Back in black. Back in black. Um, make sure you give this a thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube. Also, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube. Give us a five stars if you're on Apple. We're going to have a bank t-shirt up, too. We're going to have a bank t-shirt up. Tomorrow? What should it say? Mm-hmm. We'll have a bank you should up by tomorrow. We'll, we'll have one up tomorrow. And then you can also give us suggestions for other bank merchandise yeah. because we are into this and we'll financial steal that shit. And we won't give you credit. For the long haul. And you oh. won't get money. You'll actually probably end up losing money somehow. Oh, yeah. By you submitting something to us, you are consenting the to keys give it to, to us life. forever. And yeah. this is the disclaimer that... 
will be walking by when these shirts are in like Spencer's gift shop (laughs) and comic. What is that store? Comic Sans. Comic Sans store. Yeah. All right, guys. The bank. I'm at the bank. (laughs) All right. And you like push it and it farts or something like that. (laughs) All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. Peace. (laughs)